Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundworks Engineering, Kerbal Engineering. Today we are building this bad boy, a Warp SSTO Anubis Mark 1. So the requirements of this one are actually pretty simple. I want a small SSTO capable to, of traveling up to the orbit, having a huge ass delta V, and being able to actually go, let's say, to warp. So um, this is a, for a special mission. I do want uh, Valentina to investigate the rings of Sarnas and take any other investigation opportunities that are there. So it's been a while until we had a, uh, you know, a proper Kerbal Engineering episode of building SSTOs, and I'm very much eager to get that one rolling. So, we have a Mark II cockpit, adding, uh, I'm just trying now of investigating what do we need in terms of uh, nuclear reactor, Alcubier drive, all that jazz, whatever we need to be able to place, to be able to have... Um, uh, Kerber Rundrum engines because the whole point of this building this Kerber Rundrum delivery system was for me to be able to have a Kerber Rundrum based SSTO that could be taking off from Kerbin and then going pretty much anywhere. Yeah, anywhere is actually a far fetched word in my opinion, but it doesn't matter. We can actually see what we can do. So let's just quickly see. Two carborundrum drives. That gives us a very low thrust to weight, but I mean, semi decent delta V. And I'm thinking maybe I do not need the 1.25, you know, fusion drives because those aren't too efficient in the atmosphere. However, once they get into the vacuum, they are just badass. So. Uh, let us take that part away and I'm thinking mark 2 quad coupler yes so I want two strong drives to get us to orbit and then two smaller ones that would be getting us around so I'm gonna be putting two small carborundrum drives because they're not that much demanding but they have a decent thrust to weight and they have an ex extraordinary delta V once you fill it with carborundrum. So as you can see, this craft would have roughly around 80,000 delta V, which is just incredible. Given when I load it with, you know, nuclear stuff and all that jazz, then it won't be as powerful, but still, I, I consider it, it will be pretty decent. So let's see like that. Uh, hold on. Now, Kerbal Power Fission Generator, sure. That means that we want some lights at the end. Otherwise, we'll be just lighting green. I mean, it's all, it's, after all, it's Kerbal, but still. Okay, so let's let's see what else do we have and I have to be careful in terms of placement of my Alcubia warp drive because and I want a different cockpits I mean that one has gotten old pretty quickly and this one actually has uh, looks a little bit like F-16 fighter or something like that but it has also built-in air intake which I think is great then we want some life support hex cans I don't need them big, I just need them efficient, so please come on, stop dilly dallying and just. Yeah, uh, please come on. Supplies, yes. Oh, don't fight me, please. I was trying to put the bigger ones, but as you can see, they're clearly fighting me on all fronts. So far, the bubble looks okay. I have to check it, remember to check it from every now and then because I'm afraid that, uh, you know, if things get out of bubble, bad things could happen. Then when it comes to engines, I was considering a few different options, but I still think I will remain with my trusty 
uh, rapiers. Uh, we have scimitars. Those are the bigger ones. Hmm, what else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, no, I will think I'll take the rapiers. And I'll put two of them. Good. Then let's put some radiator panels because we will need some active radiators for us to be... How much power do we need? Okay, 60. I think two small ones should do it. If we put it like on the side. Come on. Attach nicely, will you? There you had it. Good. Okay. So those are the two radiator panels that are, that will be cooling this bad boy. And it's interesting, they will be cooling it but inside of cargo bay. That's something to, that remains to be seen. Okay. Life support, 300 days. I think that should be more than plenty. Let's put some RTGs and let's put them in front. Balancing issues, right? So let's put the large Omnilite, sure. I'd say this looks rather sleek, don't you? So let's call it Spaceplane Anubis Mark I. It's a warp capable space plane. That looks like a fighter jet. That is also an SSTO. Okay, clearly, as you can see, a lot of my craft just... They're just over-engineered. Way over-engineered. But, yeah, that's the way I roll. Let's put some wings on it. And I obviously take the procedural wings. Flavor Space Plane Plus. Let's put them like that. Angle them slightly backwards to give them that nice flip. Sure, then I want to be thinning them towards the edges. How was I doing that? Oh, uh, yes, something like that. Thicker at the base, thinner at the edges, of course. Good. Then let's put the wingtips. I want them to be thinning out even more. I just want to make sure that I flip them properly. Okay, then I do want them angling slightly backwards, a little bit higher up. I do want them to provide some stability, obviously. By the way, guys, th those that you have been watching my channel, you know that these wing tips are my kind of thing, I actually like to roll with them, and they do provide some stability further on, so, yeah. Let's search for some procedural control surfaces, wherever they may be in this endless mishiver of mods. Okay, there we are. Let's turn those around, and obviously that puts my center of lift behind my center of mass, clearly. I want to reduce them slightly, not too much, but yeah. Okay. I'd say that looks pretty decent. Just extend them a little bit more, yeah. Oh, wrong button, sorry. I do want to raise them up just a smidge, good. So far the craft looks rather stable. Then I want to be putting two other ones and obviously I don't want this big of a control surface, that's just hideous. As the whole texture would suggest it. Let's put them slightly upwards, reduce them ever so slightly. Ooh, and they're thick as hell, hold on. Come on, shrink them you, shrink but do not elongate, I don't want to elongate it, I want you shrunk and short, something like those, yeah, ooh, fat bottom, well it's fat bottom control surface, 
same procedure thinning them out good I don't expect it to give too great of authority but some in terms of your and you should give in terms of everything but your good yep and you should give everything but your as well great I think this should make the craft pretty stable now I would like to have me some tails something like that perhaps now this plane is not intended to be docking anywhere so I don't need the to, to pay attention to the spacing a little less control deflection a little more control deflection here to give it a little bit more control I like the way it looks now let's see uh, I do want to be putting the landing gear and intakes but let's take a landing gear first somewhere here and then what we want to be putting to bigger landing gear as well and I think this would get them in the roughly same height which is good I no longer have the adjustable landing gear so that's that's a damn shame let's see air intakes yeah two here and then two there looks kind of good but I need to move this winglets a little bit let me just take some finer adjustments in terms of alignment yes you a little bit further out here great this should take care of intakes and um, what else would we, we don't want to place the info drive because this will be a complex craft with lots of action group and it's a pretty pricey bugger it's 12 million if you can take a look I mean warp technology doesn't come cheap not by a long shot so yes that's something definitely we need to take into account so first would be switching mode second would be intakes that's my standard assignment okay three would be turning toggling the rapier engines four let's put the react radiator and the reactor I'd say toggle the radiators Oh, I want to be putting that intake as well. Yes. Now, six, I want to be toggling carborundrum engines. Both of them. Seven, I'd say I would want to be having the engine on Alcubia drive. Okay, then I want to be putting some air brakes obviously and put them from beneath I want to be able to stop rather quickly if I need to and also sometimes air brakes guys do help in terms of adding extra drag to your plane which then makes it actually flip forward in case it's unstable or something so there's a tip for you put a little bit of air brakes at the end and if your craft is unstable just put them on air brakes and give some power to the uh, to your engines but this is obviously not a fix to get you out of you know bad engineering thing but it's just to make you a little bit more your life a little bit easier so one rapier switch mode two toggle all intakes three toggle rapiers four we will be putting reactor plus the radiators five cargo bay doors six carborundrum drives seven will be putting the alcubia drive by the way this uh, info drive whoever made it it's just sheer genius for the craft that you would use a lot of you know these uh, a lot of action groups this is just perfect okay and i typically have two separate air brake groups because one of them is like for heavy duty braking and another one is for smaller 
Okay, so let's start the simulation. Let's see how it will do. Throttle to max and let's kick the gas. Acceleration is crazy. Thrust to weight on takeoff is 1.7, which is amazing. The craft is very controllable. Oh yes. And very fast too. And very unstable apparently. Okay. Back to the drawing board. Okay. So far no arguments when it comes to... Let's just put carborundrum in for the purpose of testing. That's also something I forgot. And then I want to be putting some struts. The less visible the better. You to connect to the wings, yes. You to connect to the wings, yes. I'm repeating myself, but okay. Then uh, the two of you bottom guys also attached to the... Attached to something. Yes, wings, good. And then I would prefer two of you attaching to these two wings. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that should be enough to maintain a structural integrity. So let's do a try. Okay, 120, 130, and it shoots off like a rocket, literally. To thrust weight too flat and liquid fuel is burning pretty fast. But we don't need to care. I mean, if we're just, you know, going that far out, we just might as well, you know, switch to. Oh, and we ran out of fuel. Oh boy. Well, I guess that would mean that we have a little bit too little fuel. Let's put turn on the carborundum drive, shall we? And it has total of 27,000 delta V. So I'm not overly concerned. I'm just gently raising the thrust on it, just to make sure that we can maintain a positive upwards momentum. So far, so good. Let's level off and see if we can achieve that level of acceleration. It chewed through this fuel as if it was hotcakes. Now I'm closing the intakes manually. For some reason, because I forget, I set the action groups and I forget them. Oh well, you know what? I might as well be trying the re-entry. Since we are already going down and yeah. Let's test the air brakes. So far looks okay. I mean the plane looks pretty well and it's actually pretty stable which is kind of cool. Okay some minor engineering rework needs to be done. Now. I just have to make sure, sure to take all of the intakes because this, these intakes have double intakes and that's kind of like the thing I forgot. Then next configuration of the wing. I want to add liquid fuel to them as well. So the, thing, the wings do have a little bit of weight and they have a little bit of extra fuel. And I think that should provide us enough. I mean it's thrust weight 1.5 and that's great on its own right even. So let's do another simulation pass. This is guys by the way for you who have just joined this is the 
the episodes where I actually construct different craft, rovers, SSTOs, and all that jazz. And then I test them out. For those of you who are interested, how the planes or space planes or yeah ships that I'm flying in my interplanetary voyage series are being constructed. So, I think that should be way better. Our thrust to weight is still high enough. And this engine is sipping fuel pretty nicely. But this wings more than make enough for the amount of fuel that we need to have. So I'm a little bit reducing our thrust just because we don't need to go that fast yet. And it also decreases our fuel consumption until we get to roughly 10,000-ish mark. So we'll see how it actually fares this time. Now let's up the tempo a little bit. Our thrust weight is 1.80. Our surface velocity is coming up to the 620, 30 ish mark, so I'm just leveling off. And I have a feeling we'll be running out of intake air pretty soon. Yes, so this is the rocket mode now engaging. Which pushed us to 38. But then again, immediately switching to carborundum drives, and I think we should be golden. The problem is that only the my reactor hasn't spooled up yet, so I'm consuming a lot of energy from my battery. So I'm just making sure that... Okay, now it's kicking in, which means I can kick the... I can kick the gas in full swing. Good. And as you can see, basically our time to apoapsis is, although decreasing, we are raising our apoapsis significantly enough. And our orbital velocity is 1200 meters per second. So I'm, I have a good feeling about getting into space today, guys. So, yeah. 50. Time to apoapsis is still decreasing which usually can be a bad sign but given that the fact that we are almost coming up on three quarters of orbital velocity I'm not overly concerned and now our time to apoapsis has started to increase again because yeah okay let's just take a look beautiful craft going very well and just look at that delta V, 25,000 delta V. With some liquid fuel to spare for the re-entry. I think this is just perfect. We just need to test other aspects of the plane. And then I'll be probably running it in my interplanetary voyage. Serious. Okay, and we are almost at the orbital velocity. I'm just gonna lower my nose a little bit. Our apoapsis is already 75, which is great. Yeah, I mean, this is awesome. A little bit more and I can immediately burn for the apoapsis, I guess. So our, we are on the, our way to apoapsis. And then at the apoapsis of 120, we can immediately burn for the next apoapsis, which I would like to take around 1,000, roughly. 1,000 kilometers. So, screenshot. It's a beautiful plane, actually. It looks like just a regular plane, nothing out of the ordinary, and that's the thing that I love about it. Okay, our sun is setting, so I'm very sorry, guys, that we'll be doing this burn in the dark. 
and that's gonna happen in 1 minute and 50 seconds roughly. Now let's do the burn. Obviously we are already in the orbit. Let's just now keep burning until we hit 1000 kilometers apoapsis. Because at that altitude magic happens. Or actually not magic, but we just kick in our Alcubierre drive and leave Kerbin system. And since we already run a couple of craft, the probe and the dreamer, uh, we have, or what we call it, the Eye of Ra, we actually now have a chance to run the actual SSTO with the also Alcubierre drive. So let's go up to the apoapsis. This is all just a test, obviously, to test the feasibility, but yeah. Okay. Let's flip it, screenshot, open up, open up the warp drive, kill the carborundrum and let's turn on and whoa! Okay, so that happens when your not all of your stuff is within the warp bubble. Nice. Well, you know what? Our Alcubierre drive is still attached, so let's see just if we can at all burn towards Sarnus, regardless of the sum of the orbital debris that we have left. Although we are missing the main engines, and look, we are dragging the debris along with us. I don't know if that's intended or not, but yeah, we definitely need to fix this. So a little bit placement of the Alcubierre drive needs to be changed. And I think of swapping it with the Carborundrum engine. So let's see. First we take out this, then we take out these. And then we take you out. So we put you in here, then we put you, and then we put, come on, you. How's that faring now? Ooh, still out by a long shot. And scientists told us that this is not a problem as long as the majority of uh, the stuff is actually in. So what I'm thinking is rather let's place this, this here, and let's place the Alcubierre drive here. Would that work? Okay, yeah, that could work with nose, nose picking out slightly. I don't know, by the way, if it will work or not, but yeah. I guess what I need to do, I need to find a way how to shift this, these things back a little bit or just reduce the wings or something. Oh, come on, reduce the wings. And obviously my brakes get confused. So I need to squeeze all those in at the moment. I'm afraid that my wingtips might still get, you know, lost in the process. But how about I just move the whole wing section forward? and tuck it a little bit further in, because the, the thing that I would be losing for sure, if I don't do that, I will be losing my uh, control surfaces on the wingtips. Oh, this is so close, come on. Let's just see if, can I just rotate the wingtips a little bit inwards? Hmm. Yeah. How about I rotate you like these? Oh, just out. So 
I need you to go further in a little bit further in. Okay, now you should be fine. And that means that I need to move the control surfaces a little bit further out front ones. And I'll be tucking in the rapiers a little bit just for beauty reasons, I guess. Let's call it Anubis Mark II. Okay, good. Now, time for another simulation. Now, this time, since I already simulated that it's running well around uh, at the surface of Kerbin, because these changes are not that significant to its aerodynamic profile, however, uh, let's see how it fares in space. Okay, and we are at 1000 kilometers orbit, sure. Let's just go on the sunny side because that makes simulation a whole lot more manageable and interesting. Ooh, yeah, easy turnable, sure. Okay, let's open up. First, activating our propulsion, then let's pull up. Okay, nothing fell off. A little bit nosy speaking, but still majority of it it's inwards. At least Valentina is in. And kicking it. And away we go. Okay, I'd say this is pretty much a successful test. Good. Let's close it down and then we can have all the Delta V that we want still. A total of 25. So yeah, I'm just testing that everything works. All the action groups are correct. And yeah, let's revert to the editor. Okay guys, so I have a feeling that I will want to actually continue with this, uh, with this craft as is with some minor tweaks and some more science experiments which I will be putting in at the moment. So like gravioli, temperature sensor and all that jazz. Whatever we can put like micro containment pod, all the experiments that we can run on a strange new worlds, assuming that we come there. Altimetry, science micro, that's like, um, yeah, science junior, something like that. And yeah. Okay, so I think that pretty much, guys, uh, wraps it up for this episode. Like if you like the episode, hit subscribe for more KSP content that will be coming soon. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Until then, thank you very much for watching. This is Gromfork signing off.